And for that reason, I know you're looking for the man. And the man in the mask is sitting in front of you. as your salvation. I don't invest in myself alone. I am investing in you. And truly, these innocent leaders sitting beside me, of course I will not go to them and tell them that, hey, I am a man in a mask and I want you to come to Ghana to support me to do this and this. And this man of this dignity and this woman with such power will say, yes, I'm going to follow you to come to Ghana to do your convention and all of that. No. It is part of the movement. We need to educate. We need to uplift our children. We need to voice out to them. If you are about to find out about this man in the mask, because I never spoke a word, you were looking for me. I didn't tell you whether I am into politics, whether I am an evangelist, whether I am a conventionist or a revolutionist. We have been, we have been miseducated. And so as a, and many others, we understand that we have failed right. And we do know that with our little wisdom and the energy and the intelligence of our youth, together we can take our Africa in a new direction. That is what we came here to do. And that is what New Africa Foundation has asked us to do. We do know that our leaders cannot lead us on their own. They need all of us. So the message that we were going to deliver to our youth today was the message of hope, the message of resilience, and the message that says the Africa we want can only be built by us for us and for us to succeed at doing so we must be united that the african youth are africa's future without them there is no future for africa and as elders we have a responsibility to share with them the truth and nothing. That is the message that we came here to deliver. That is what New Africa Foundation had requested us to do. We may not be at the convention center, but we intend to continue to preach the gospel of truth until we reach the promised land. I have no doubt in my mind that we will get there because Africa, the Africans, People are like to describe as the beautiful, intelligent. So the mothers and fathers of humanity, we will get to the promised land. Woo! And that's what we Thank you, Mama Africa, Dr. Abekana, for leading the way. The most objective, fearless, and decisive mother we have known in Africa. Before we get to Prof, I'd like to go to your right. Prof, right? Okay, let's have Prof respond to this, and then we can move to your right. Professor Thank you very much. Uh, my good sister, Dr. Arikana, spoken for me. And I believe for all of us. We came here to Accra, Ghana, to share our message. A message of hope. The message that Africa needs at this time. And there is no better place in the continent of Africa to begin that message than Accra, Ghana. It is in this Accra, Ghana, that the Osage for Kwame Nkrumah.
67 years ago, spoke to the world and told the world that the independence of Ghana meant nothing if the continent of Africa was not free. 67 years later, we were congregating here in Accra in the very same place where the founding fathers and mothers of Ghana congregated to share the message of God. Invited as we were by the New Africa Foundation with one single instruction that we have lamented for too long, agonized for too long, and the time is now to organize. That is the innocent message that we came here to deliver. And in a manner totally inexplicable to us, we are not at that venue. But is it not the wise to say when the world serves you a lemon, ask not for an orange, make yourself lemonade. We are here therefore to say that the message will be alive and well. And you who are here, young and old, you are the conduit via which we are now telling the world that the journey of hope continues apace, not only within the continent of Africa, which is the mother continent, but to Africans in the diaspora. I have no doubt in my mind that there is a conspiracy of sorts by the elements that is sharpening the way it has happened. So this is not an occasion for lamentation. It is an occasion for redoubling our efforts and our presence here in Accra, Ghana. My good friend, Honorable Obi, my dear sister, Dr. Rikana Chihomri Kwao. This is the occasion for which the English word serendipity was created. It is a serendipitous occasion that heralds a great future for the continent of Africa. So that looking forward, a meeting such as this will happen not only here in Accra, Ghana, but I look forward to a meeting such as this taking place in Ouagadougou in Burkina, taking place in Dhaka in Senegal, in Nairobi, in Kenya, in Johannesburg, in South Africa, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, because this is about the continent of Africa. And we say this at a time when we know that Africa has promised to herself that we are going to make more intimate our, our interaction. This is why the Africa continental free trade area is headquartered here in Accra, Ghana. This a crowd gun is where all Africans of good Professor Mielo understands both the context and the concept, and it's upon the heritage of people like this that the new Africa will definitely be born low down. Before we go to the question, I want to ask one of the, the most feared men in Nigeria right now, if I would say, Mr. Bito. The African is into prof and
we might not be at the convention, but for that we will not stop the conversation. We only shifted vein. So the conversation continues. We're in Ghana to start the conversation about Africa. Africa for too long has suffered. And everybody knows the reason why Africa has suffered. People can try to present it in different ways. It's about it every day. Africa has been going through what it's going through because of what I always say it is due to one problem, leadership. It is failed leadership over the years that brought Africa where it is. I want to start a conversation because of what Africa has said, talking to the youth of Africa. No continent in the world today has the potential of Africa. Not one. We are the second largest in terms of population and size. But our potential is far greater than even number one. Because today, Africa is the only continent that has a population of 1.1 billion youths, energetic, talented, ready to leave the world in different areas of the world. Africa is home to the biggest, highest amount of natural resources, from minerals to we have 65 percent today of the world all cultivated arable land. So imagine what we can do. We can feed the world. We can do everything. But ironically. Because of what I started with, failed leadership over the years, Africa is also home to the highest number of poor people. Out of the 700 million people in extreme poverty, 431 million live in Africa. Over 30% of our population, if you go to to multi-dimensional poverty out of 1.1 billion. Over 60% of Africa. With Congo and Nigeria leading. Today, in the surface of the world, Congo has the highest amount of natural call it minerals. Over 24 trillion. Nigeria has a similar situation. We can extrapolate Congo situation to all over Africa, where they have everything but they are producing poverty. 